Good afternoon. Yesterday I posted about the cargo ship that was burning with um, 3,000 cars on board, 25 of which were EVs. There's been a few developments overnight, but news is still fairly scant. But I wanted to dig into this just one more time because the article that I read out has had quite a few amends that have been done. So I just wanted to address those. They've changed the title. So it now says race to salvage sinking cargo ship carrying 3,000 vehicles including 350 Mercedes as it burns out of control in the North Sea after fire caused by electric car. There were quite a lot of people in the comments saying, you don't know if it's been caused by an electric car, but there were a lot of sources saying that it was caused by an electric car. The fire started close to an electric car. Let's be honest, it's most likely that it's gonna be a battery that's caused the problem. We saw it at Lydon Hill Racetrack at the weekend um, when two rally cars went up in smoke. One of the batteries failed. The entire garage was trashed, burnt to the ground, and um, the racing was all cancelled as a result. We know that these batteries are a fire risk, so we're pretty confident that this is what's happened. There are also a lot of people in the comments saying, what about all the other fires that you have? And EVs are no more likely to catch fire. They're actually safer than a petrol car. But the problem is, if my diesel Volvo catches fire, I can put it out with a fire extinguisher. You cannot do that with an EV. It's a completely different kettle of fish. It's probably not the right words to use. Let's look at some of the other changes. Um, so additions and amends on Thursday morning. We now have Mercedes saying that they had 350 cars on board. I've written there, who knows that? And where is the ship's manifest? I want to see the ship's manifest. I want to understand what else was on the ship. Another bit that's been added on, seven crew members jumped overboard um, and the gentleman that died was Indian. So this is an international disaster because you've got um, Indian crew member who's died. The boat's registered in Panama, but it's owned in Japan and it was sailing from Germany to Singapore. We said Egypt, but now I've been told that Port Said in Egypt is a stop off point for going further east. If it was indeed going further east, were they luxury cars for, um, you know, Arabs with lots of money? Can you say that? Um, anyway, the, the, so the fact that the crew members jumped overboard, how flipping hot must that fire have been and how all encompassing, even if the entire ship wasn't burning at that point, for you to decide that the best thing to do is to jump off the top of a container ship it's got to have been pretty horrendous and that's again where you get into this thermal runaway thing with the electric vehicle batteries as i'm filming this on thursday i believe the ship is still burning two ships alongside the freighter hosing down its sides in an attempt to cool them uh because the ship's getting that hot that essentially it's going to start melting um, the Coast Guard said, but firefighters are still unable to extinguish the flames on the ship and the smoke's billowing out the hold. What do you do when you've got 25 EVs, um, thermal runaway is in action. If they're on the ground here, if it was in this car park now, you'd stand a chance if you could get a blanket over, you can get an EV blanket, an extremely heavy material blanket that goes over the EV, or you can dunk it in a cool tub. But when you can't get even get on the ship where the cars are, are just basically gonna have to wait for it to burn to the ground, aren't they? Now, the article with its amends this morning digs a lot more into the ecology and environment side of things. And I quote, the Fremantle Highway is close to Ameland, one of four ecologically sensitive Frisian islands situated in the Wadanesi area, just north of the Dutch mainland. Also called the Frisian Islands, the area has been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has a rich diversity of more than 10,000 aquatic and terrestrial species. This includes more than 140 species of fish, of which some 20 spend their entire life in the tidal areas along the island's famous mudflats. The area also has a large seal and porpoise population. Uh, should the Fremantle Highway sink, it would be a disaster of the highest order says um the daily tabloid de telegraph so bad news for the environment um unfortunately for those 25 people who ordered evs to save the planet not happening um i've got a couple of other things here hypothetically speaking from an insurance point of view is it now financially better for the ship to sink 
Um, will the payout vary depending on if it goes to the bottom or not? Does any port actually want to accept this great big hulk of melted, burnt chemicals that is now extremely contaminated? Um, no port is going to want to have it towed in, but we also don't want it to sink because then all of the contaminated chemicals go into the sea. So this is a lose-lose situation. Comments. Uh, 2,200 comments on the article now. EV electrical cars are a tyranny forced down everyone's throats, all based on the climate hoax. Joe Biden's folly. There's some American people in the comments now because they've woken up. I mean, because of the time difference. I don't mean because people are waking up. Um, but that's happening as well. Look at how many houses are burning down due to EVs parked in the garage. No thanks. Followed by... Watch insurance companies now if you have an electric car in your garage. I bet you won't get any insurance for your burnt down home. Great point. Another one about how you deal with the fire. Restaurant kitchens have an Ansel system to extinguish fires. I'm surprised these ferries don't have the same equipment to suppress fires to cut oxygen. And then that has been quite quickly corrected by a keyboard warrior, obviously. The Halon isn't successful in battery fires as the heat is the issue. Even if you suppress the flames, the risk is the next cells go into thermal runaway and will start again. It's not unheard of for fires to reignite for days after the initial suppression of the flames. Cargo aircraft would depressurize the cargo hold to limit oxygen supply and hopefully allow a landing. They cannot do that on a ship. Uh, next comment, in case you forgot, these batteries caused fire and crash of a UPS plane killing the pilots. On the environmental thing, we've got, oh yes, this is good for the environment. Not EVs aren't good for the environment to start with. How much pollution will this cause? That ship will burn for days, not to mention the loss of life and the loss of millions of dollars in cars. EVs should be banned full stop. Then a great point from someone. Many chargers made in China have copper wires that are much thinner. After a certain amount of time, charging the wires become very hot and start a fire. Great point. All of these chargers and the batteries and everything pretty much made in China, and we know what the quality is going to be like. Another one here, the Great Reset proceeds unimpeded. The elites don't want you to have a private vehicle or be able to travel by plane whenever you feel like. That would be reserved for them, according to Agenda 2030. Expect more and more of these freedom to travel hindrances being thrown in your way in the future. Enjoy. Kind of in line with my new conspiracy theory that the Channel Tunnel is going to be next. The problems with EVs are being deliberately closed down by the car manufacturers and stopping owners from going public. If you suffer a battery fire on an EV, the only way a manufacturer will help is if you say nothing to anyone. No prizes for wondering why. The problem is a scandal of epic proportions, and that is before we have even more of these extremely dangerous vehicles on the road. Great point. Um, if you know more about manufacturers shutting down these discussions, then contact me in the usual way. So sad that the tragedy has occurred. We are sleepwalking to a major unparalleled crisis by 2030 when only electric cars can be sold. The technology is simply not ready for it to be rolled out on the scale planned by our dimwit government. The government is destroying our car industry and creating a future crisis. Why? Because they neither listen nor have the competence to manage a rice pudding as has been evidenced by the last 13 years. Not sure I agree with that one. The government are doing an incredible job of um, exactly what they've been told to do. Uh, it's not really about incompetence. I think they are incredibly competent because they are quite simply following a path that has been laid down for them by uh, evil nefarious organisations that have a foothold in every single government. Let's finish on a high note, though. Come on, let's have a laugh at the end of this quite tragic video. Is there actually, there's 350 Mercedes on the boat, right? Is there actually a new Mercedes that we want to save? Honestly, on the Mercedes website, have a look, see if you can find a car that is actually nice. Um, I don't think Mercedes have been making good looking or particularly interesting cars for quite a few years. Interestingly, the EQC electric Mercedes is now interest free. Now, you'd only make a car interest-free if you couldn't sell them. <coughs> Tesla. I know, I know. Everybody in the comments, the Model Y is the best-selling car in Europe. Yeah, I know. Because there's so many bloody incentives for fleet buyers and business users, and now they've made it interest-free. 
Make EVs compete in a fair market and they'll die on their ass. Lastly, look at these prices for your electric car to save the planet. The EQE starts at 74 grand. The EQS starts at 105 grand. The EQE SUV starts at 90 grand. And the EQS SUV starts at 129 grand. The Maybach EQS SUV doesn't have a price. Incredibly expensive to save the planet, isn't it? It really is a preserve of the luxury to, you know, demonstrate that you care about the climate. Interestingly as well, we had a look at the EQE and EQS SUVs outside a Mercedes dealership the other day. And um, after looking around them for a little while, um, I got a load of salt, dumped it on the roof and they both just shriveled up. It was great. Lastly... I thought I'd spec a brand new Mercedes to go on the ship for when it's been repaired. Um, I looked all through the Mercedes website and I went for, in the spirit of huge cars, a petrol powered GL63 AMG black edition. But then I deleted the black paint and I went for emerald green with Bahia brown and black interior, black wheels and a towing pack. 21 miles per gallon, a snip at £154,955. Can't wait for it to arrive. I genuinely hope they don't put it on a boat next to some electric vehicles. Thanks very much for watching this video. Um, probably no more videos on this now unless there's a major development or if it does indeed look like some sort of massive fraud has taken place. But um, we'll keep an eye on the news and follow the story as it develops. Off to fetch my new Mercedes.